Yet another free AI art platform hit the scene. This time it's Playground AI. This is actually the website here. You can see they have their community feed of the images so you can see the kind of quality you can expect. And all you gotta do to get started is click here and log in with your Google account. And once you're in, you get this feed of images that you can of course explore. But we're gonna skip right past that and go up the top here to create. And you can see we get this interface. So uh, they do invite you to join their Discord server. I'm just gonna X that for now. But essentially all we need to do to get started, if you don't wanna do absolutely anything yet, is just simply go here to prompt and I can type in a prompt of something that I'd like to see. When I'm ready, I hit generate. And this is our first image. Now let's start exploring some of the options here. Straight away when we create this image, we can create variations. We can straight up download this image. It is currently 512 by 512 pixels. I also have these actions here. I can edit, copy link, I can make this private, I can in-paint. There's all of these awesome tools that you can apply to this image. So straight away, the first thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna upscale this by four. It's fairly, fairly decent, not as good as I'd probably like, but the resolution is actually pretty good at 2048 by 2048 pixels. But let's see if we can get something better. I'm gonna bin this one and move on. You can see there is also a pro plan available, but we're focusing on the free stuff today. And the cool thing is the model here used was Stable Diffusion 1.5. I can switch to Stable Diffusion 2.1 and type something in here again. And I hit generate. So it's created this image using Stable Diffusion 2.1, which is another sort of, it's even better sort of model a little bit more updated but i can also switch to dali 2. however it does require a paid add-on so you can use dali 2 here if you're willing to pay for the pro license which is ten dollars per month for 800 images but we'll come back to that later and see what's available but what's cool as i go through and create these images i can also change my columns here to view more as i go i'm going to stick with stable diffusion 2.1 and we're going to keep on playing so i'm going to say here again a and we can now play with a filter. So we're gonna start improving and adding to this as we go. I'm gonna click on this filter and I can actually add something in here. So I've got these two here, such as close-up portrait or old timey. So it looks like we have just these two for now. I'm gonna choose the close-up portrait. If we have close-up portrait, Samurai in the Mountains meditating. And we can also remove certain things from the image. This has been put in automatically, so you can add some more things in there if you wanted to. The other thing too is, so this is the left column over here. Over the right, we have more options. For the image dimensions, 768 by 768 is all we get with Stable Diffusion 2.1. We can adjust the guidance, so we can bring that up a little if we want it to be a bit more closer to what we want, or we can bring it down if we want it to be a little bit more free. I'm gonna bring it down to see what kind of result we get. The quality, now this up to 30 is sort of how far it'll actually go with rendering the image. You can take it beyond 30 to increase the quality, but it actually tends to only sort of uh, change the image past a certain point. So you can't just crank up the quality and get these awesome images, but you can try play with that and see what kind of results you do get. The seed is the starting point. So if you wanna try and work with the exact same generation and starting point each time, you can pop a number in there. So I can turn this off and play with this number uh, specifically. We're gonna keep it on randomizer. And at the moment, I've got one image. I'm gonna say I wanna see four images. And if I want a private session, I can switch to a pro plan. But for now, we've got four images and a few settings for Stable Diffusion 2.1. Let's hit generate and see what we get. And now check out these images. We've added that filter. We've got some really high quality images that uh, have really sort of blown, blown me away. The detail in the skin Everything is actually really cool. So what we might even do is go up to the close-up portrait, change it to old timey, and see what we get with that. And we get something a little bit different again. So you can see how we get these cool, different sort of options with our prompts. The other thing too is if I switch back to Stable Diffusion 1.5, our options change again. I can even change the resolution to something different. Uh, most of the other settings are the same, but I can change the resolution, and I'm not sure, but it does seem to have more filters. So let's say we go for a retro anime filter and we go samurai meditating in the mountains. So you can check out some of these images. They're pretty cool. We've got a lot of different options there. So that is essentially, you've got more filters with, with uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5. So I would highly recommend going in and exploring these and having a play because there's definitely a lot of things we can play with here. But We've generated some images, so let's go down to one of these really cool, really high quality 2.1 images and see what options we have. 
Again, if I hit the plus symbol, I can edit this. So I can give it an instruction. So it says here, add a mustache to his face. Maybe I just say, open his eyes. So let's generate and see what that does. Now that actually hasn't opened his eyes at all. But uh, let's take this a step further and see what else we can make happen. Make his mustache green, give him an angry expression. So you see it's kind of tinted the image a little bit, make it a green. So it hasn't done a ton, but uh, it's still, that's something we can play with a little bit further. I would say this image is probably not the best. What I could say even more so is say, remove facial hair, make him clean shaven or something like that. Now we've had some success, but <laughs> the image is a little bit odd, but that's just the, what happens with AI art. It takes a lot to figure out exactly what works, but uh, you sort of get the idea. Now I'm gonna hit cancel here, and we're gonna move on and see what other options we have. I can copy a link to send to someone. I can make it private by going pro. I can download this, but we're gonna play with InPaint. Now I can actually remove areas here. What I can do is I can remove maybe this part of his ears and his eyes. And what this does, it allows us to generate something within these areas. So now I click done and you can see down here under image to image, we have our image. So I'm gonna say samurai, samurai face with wide eyes, no pupils and pointy elf ears. So you can see now his eyes are open, his ears are a bit pointier and uh, overall it's, been, it's a, been one way we can basically edit the exact parts of the image. So we're gonna come back down to our image, hit the plus symbol and play with a few more things. So we can create variants or use in, in image to image. So what happens is if I click this use in image to image, remove this, use in image to image, and it'll pop that image in there. So now what I can say, it'll actually reference that image. I can keep this same samurai face with white eyes, no pupils, pointy elf ears, and say lightning coming out of his ears. And let's generate. So you can see how it's actually gone and made our image a bit more closer to what we said here with the white eyes, or not so much the white eyes, but the pointy ears, the lightning, and it's referenced that same sort of layout to the image. It's not the exact same person, but it has referenced the image with the colors, the way that it's framed. We can see that it's actually used that image as a, a bit of a guide to creating this one. But if I come down and the image strength is bumped up to 60, something a lot stronger and hit generate again, it's gone closer to that image and still sort of try to find somewhere in between the two. So we can actually get really good refinements on our images and play around with those pretty successfully. Now I'm gonna come back down again, hit plus, and this time I'm gonna create variants. And you can see it's produced this second image up here. So it's a pretty cool if it's create a variation on the same prompt. I click on this again, and the, the option is not there at the moment, but uh, that's a pretty cool feature. Now the next thing I wanna look at, if I go back here, I can do a face restoration, but the face actually looks pretty good. So what if we come down to this image down here? and perform a face restoration. It's actually smoothed out the face just a little bit. And I can go ahead and download that or compare. I'm gonna hit close. But uh, we can actually work on improving the faces on our images if we want to. We can do the same with this image where the face might look a little strange again. We go plus and face restoration. And the face is looking a little bit more normal, although it's actually blurred a little bit, but uh, it's pretty cool. Coming back to our original image again, I can view this full screen if I want to preview it, which is pretty cool. But uh, considering the amount of detail, I wouldn't mind upscaling this to see what kind of result we get from it also. So hit plus, upscale by four. And this is our upscaled image. And the quality is actually really amazing. If I zoom in, you can see it's a very large image. The detail is pretty awesome. And it's one of those things where when you compare this to something like Mid Journey, which does probably the best imagery out there, it doesn't produce these high resolution images. So the image resolution of this picture is 3072 pixels by 3072 pixels, which is pretty insane. Now you noticed before we had some options disappear from here, but if I switch from Stable Diffusion 2.1 to 1.5, some of those options come back. But another thing that we can explore with this, we can import images to edit. So if I go up the top here where it says import image to edit, I click that. 
I'm gonna bring in this skull I made about 20 years ago in Photoshop, literally about 20 years ago. And I have the original here, which also means I can go in, I can say make changes here, so add a mustache to his face. What I can do is give the skull eyes pupils and make him purple. And I can also edit my instruction strength so it goes a bit better, add the quality and details a little bit. And uh, I can choose to remove things from before, so I have a negative prompt. So I'm gonna leave that for now, I'm gonna hit generate. So you see how it's edited my image using the AI. Uh, so you can actually even edit this image further if you want to, but you can actually go in and make edits to your images. And also if I go to cancel and I use image to image here, I actually don't even have to edit the image. I can just use my, I can just basically bend this and I can go here to image to image and simply upload the same picture again. So glow in the dark skull demon and hit generate. And you can see it's created a skull based very closely off the layout of my image. Now, once again, if I go into filter, although I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna use Stable Diffusion 2.1. Although we don't have image to image with Stable Diffusion 2.1, so we'll go back to 1.5, add in our demon again, choose a filter. We'll choose a dark comic this time, or geometria style. Add a prompt and generate. And again, it's taken the layout of my image and worked off that. So There's a very cool setup and a very simple interface. If we use something like Mid Journey where you want a few more options and tools around to play with, this is definitely the way to go. And if you've used Leonardo AI and you think it's just a bit too complex, this is much simpler and uh, has plenty of features. And you just simply log in with your Google account and you can start using it straight away. Well, except for the dolly and some of the privacy, but everything else here is, uh, is pretty cool. And I highly recommend if you want to get better results, definitely play around with some of these um, styles because that seems to be the strength is these are all styles that have been models, uh, been trained around a certain style. As you can see here, this skull image is looking pretty cool. If I upscale it. Another thing we can do is head back to hit the Playground AI logo at the top left here. We can go back to our community feed. If I want to go to say, I've got my feed here, which shows images of people I follow. I don't follow anyone yet. But if I go to say animals, let's say I want to recreate or play with this. I can click on this image here and I can see the prompt. I can actually copy that prompt if I want to and try it. I can copy the negative prompt and try that. You see here, copy prompt. I can edit the image. So if I click edit, I can use the same edit function as before. I can remix the image. So I click remix. I've got all the settings here that they've used. So I can essentially do what they've been doing, but I can change some of the details, change some of the settings and uh, play with that image further as well. So that's one of the cool things about Playground AI. You can really just have a lot of fun with it. You can explore other people's images and try to sort of improve on those or work on those for yourself. So it's a great platform to play with. And like I said, I sign up with Google and it's what I've been doing here today is totally free. I haven't been paid a cent. Only if you want to use Dolly or the privacy, maybe a few other features. We can check out the plans by going up the top here and going to pricing. Free for everyone, you get a thousand images a day. Images can be used commercially. So straight away, you can get started making images. Uh, you've got the $15 a month plan, 2,000 images a day with Stable Diffusion, no waiting, no limits, uh, faster image generation, or you've got $10 a month, which is 800 dolly images. So uh, it's kind of like, I think it's one or the other. It doesn't look like you can actually, so this is an add-on, I should say, an add-on to the pro plan. So you can pay up to $25 a month if you want to really get the most out of Playground AI. So check out Playground AI, the link is in the description. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like or check out my channel for more AI art videos. Otherwise, have a great day and hope to see you again soon.